Over the past six months, my team and I have been all over the country checking out your best restaurant nominations. And tonight, my competition continues, this time to find the best North African. North African food is like no other. The careful layering of different spices results in wonderfully aromatic dishes. One mouthful can really transport you to a completely different world. The best restaurants will mix gutsy flavours with rich, sweet and intricate combinations of spices to deliver dishes that will excite all the senses. I'm hoping tonight's contenders will show what this fantastic cuisine has to offer. Tonight, my two favourite North African restaurants will battle it out for a place in the semi-finals. From central London, it's Momo, a glamorous celebrity haunt as renowned for its vibrant atmosphere as its food. We've got one more mission, is that look, table two. We've got a great team and a great feeling and great passion and we, we're going to win it. The Momo machine is taking on Azu from Hammersmith, West London, a small family-run restaurant loved by the locals. Vas-y, t'as ton lamb. Voilà. Yes, I think I am the best. I would love to see someone challenging me. I predict a furious fight as two London restaurants take each other on in three extraordinary challenges. The first is every restaurant's worst nightmare. 30 hungry diners who will arrive and order all at the same time. First, they're heading for Momo, tucked away behind London's Regent Street. It's run by a very passionate northerner, Dave. He's been cooking since the age of 15, and he now heads up a brigade of 26 chefs. This restaurant's also been visited by some serious A-listers, from Madonna to Gwyneth Paltrow. And if they can look after those kind of customers, my diners today are in for a real treat. Hey, David. Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So the secret of success of Momo has been what? We all work together as a team, and we create, we create an atmosphere yeah. and hopefully delicious food. Yeah. Opened 13 years ago, its excellent food, stylish surroundings and party atmosphere quickly established Momo as one of London's most fashionable restaurants. As soon as you enter, it's like a theatre. You come in, you see the atmosphere, you see the deco, you see the buzz, you want to get involved. We get lots of film stars, lots of footballers, politicians, lots of, you know, people want to go through the back door. What I love most about Momo is you feel comfortable straight away. And the atmosphere is it's quite sexy. I need one lamb tagine, no coriander. Three minutes, chef. 37-year-old David has cooked in kitchens all over the world. Cooking's been my life from, from the age of 14 and a half, 15. I weigh table 50, tagine lamb, sirloin steak, medium rare. Yes. During his travels in Morocco, David fell in love with North African food. I love the passion of Moroccan cuisine. I think it's great flavours. Everybody thinks Moroccan cuisine is couscous and tagine. It's vast. Assisted for seven years by French sous chef Philippe, David gives traditional recipes his own personal touch. It doesn't look like a creme brulee. That's delicious. Only a Yorkshireman would fucking fry a creme brulee. But it works. David, that's some of the best food I've tasted so far in this competition. Make sure that you give my diners the exact experience you've just delivered to me. Now, Momo is about to be put through his paces because my ravenous diners have arrived, all expecting food and service fit for London's glitterati. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Momo. And the service shouldn't pose a problem, as front of house manager Murad has a team of nine waiters. This place deals with big numbers easily, so they can become a little bit complacent because there's only 30 diners coming in. And sometimes restaurants get bad reputations for just looking after the, the A-listers and forgetting the real customers. So first ticket on, yeah? Order one scallop, one mishwi zaluk. One fish in a day, two momos medium. Yeah, As first orders arrive, head chef David directs his brigade like a conductor with an orchestra. Don't start 14, don't start six year, please. Don't put all nine past here at the same time, please. Don't. Please. More crispy, that past here. Two minutes past here. Make sure the first three or four tables go fast and slow down. There are three starters. Moroccan aubergine caviar with mixed peppers, wood pigeon pastilla, a delicate North African pie, and scallops with aubergine chutney and a fresh herb salsa. <laughs> David's on fire, and the first starters are out within minutes. Any problems anywhere? Any? Just felt we were really sort of rushed. 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 Yeah, really yeah. rushed. And it looks like we're about to get our main course already. Damn. OK, well, let's hope the main courses don't come out as fast as the starters. Yeah, because it would be nice to relax a bit. Yeah. It's the two ladies on the end here. Don't throw their main course out as quick. You know, hold it back a little bit. David is doing his best to control the flow of food. Send table one. And slow down on 14 and 6. But it's front of house who need to pay service and make sure every table gets their food at the right time. I've just told the team to slow down. Slow down, it's not a race. 
Very good flavour combination. Light, cooked incredibly well. Yeah, very tasty. Absolutely delicious. Some of my diners are less impressed. Uh, gentlemen, the pigeon pastilla, how's that? It's OK, it's a bit too dry and um, not enough pigeon. Damn. Yeah, what was wrong with the pigeon? It was just a bit too dry and just... Oh, I did like it. Can you put one in for me? OK. The pigeon pasty is really authentic. You've got three layers. You've got like a uh, onion compote, mm -hmm. pigeon, and like scrambled eggs, yep. and topped with almonds. It's not dry. If anything, it needs a bit more pigeon in there. For mains, there's a choice of three smoked lamb shank with couscous and spicy sausages, fish wrapped in vine leaves with white beans, and that North African staple, chicken tagine. Have the chicken tagine. Yeah. Tagine, you know, it's a terracotta dish, of course, a very traditional. I love the way you taste every tagine that's going out. He may be doing it every day, but you're still tasting it every time. The kitchen is focused, while front of house look busy but don't seem coordinated. David, yep. six is a little bit impatient with the starters. How long have you waiting? Not long. There are lots of waiters, but it doesn't seem like the managers are controlling service, and some of my diners have slipped through the net. Um, the starters obviously haven't arrived yet. No. Everyone else is getting their main courses, so just wondering what's going on, because they're kind of hungry. How long are you waiting? About 20, 20, 20, 20. 25 minutes. Yeah, that's, that's too long. How long for that big table of six there with their starters? What's well, called table six is coming in about three minutes. Three minutes. Just slowing it down so we not get everything at the way at the same time. Yeah, it's finding that balance. One table complaining is too fast, one table complaining is too slow. So you've got to just try to find that balance to who hasn't had their main courses. You know, when you get 30 customers at once, you want to serve it like a party. It's very hard to pace yourself. One thing they're not is short staffed. They seem to have a manager for teaspoons, a manager for the bread, a manager for the lid, the couscous. So service should be impeccable today. So they should get that balance right. You can't serve a table, two courses, with one table, nothing. That's bad management. And far too many chiefs in the dining room and not enough Indians. In fact, there's more managers in this dining room than there are grains of fucking couscous. we definitely come again. We said that as soon as the main course came out, actually. But it's, uh, it's a lovely feel in here. We've been made to feel very comfortable. It did take quite a while to come and um, to receive my food. I, I don't like waiting that long to be to honest. Um, but what we got was nice. Lunch is over, but I'm disappointed that service was inconsistent for some of my diners. Timing was all over the shop, and that was down to the the suited and booted, the managers, far too many managers, and um, a real lack of communication with the kitchen. And thank God David was on fire, because we had too many managers on the floor that couldn't spot who'd been served what. OK, big test, that one. You're used to big numbers, so 30 diners should have been a walk in the park. How did it go for you? Went very well. I really enjoyed it, very well. Nice buzz. A great buzz. Great atmosphere. Yeah, great atmosphere. My biggest concern today was the fact that there was one table next to the big table that had their starters and main courses, and the six top had nothing to eat. When somebody hasn't got food in front of them and they're eyeing up the table next door to them, they get jealous. We had two complaints. The pasty for the pigeon, if anything. Maybe not so small in terms of dice so they can identify what they've got on their fork is a piece of pigeon. And you didn't sell enough desserts. I thought that was the best creme brulee I've ever tasted in a decade. Share the starter but make sure you save room for that dessert. That's how good they are. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. It's nice to have feedback. And even if it's negative or not good feedback, it keeps you on your toes dancing. <laughs> We've got a great team and a great feeling and great passion, and we, we're going to win it. We're here to win. Service, please, table 10. Next. My other North African contender, Azu, creates magical dishes from a kitchen lost in time. He hasn't got a non-stick fucking pan, for God's sake. Yeah, those pans are older than me, and that's saying something. It's the North African heat of my nationwide restaurant competition, and 30 hungry diners are about to descend on my second competitor. Here in Hammersmith is one of the best-kept secrets in town. This is Azu a romantic, small North African restaurant run by a lovely husband and wife team, Chris and Chris. Now, although it's small, it's punching way above its weight, a serious contender to go all the way in this competition. Hello, Chris. 
Gordon, good to see you. Likewise, my darling, good to see you too. Look how small this place is. Chris! Oh, hello. This kitchen is the size of a cupboard. Look at it. It is, it <laughs> Thank is. God you're small and thin and good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. They're scary. What are they on there for? That's the takeaway. Oh, the takeaway, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Former headmistress Chris and her chef husband Chris opened a zoo 11 years ago. They work seven days a week running this 35 cover restaurant with the help of just five other members of staff. I've got Constantine Roman couscous, two large plates, please. I mean, give her all to this restaurant. I do love working hard. I mean, you manage once a century to have sort of day off where you want to stand by, but you feel like guilty. Why am I away? And, and that guilt makes your day not a day off. You cook every day and it's... Wait. It's a passion, it's never a job for you, is yes, it? Yes, it is. What's the secret behind the success of your food? My wife. Your wife? <laughs> Chris. I don't know what to do without her, to be honest. She's very, very good support and believes really in what I do. For that, I love you more. Thank you. Chris learned to cook authentic North African food at his grandmother's knee in Algeria. This is the food of my childhood when I was living in Algeria. When she was cooking, uh, she's always, you know, having you next to her and you see how you do, she's doing it. And it looks like he's still cooking with her pots too. When was the last time you bought a new pan? <laughs> That's a good question. What have you changed in 10 years in this kitchen? Uh, not much. Where's the fridge? I've got this one here. Ah, OK. All right. Wow. OK, great. Sardines wow. and hummus. They're delicious. Merci. Very rare you see sardines today. Everyone thinks it's a oily mm. fish and no one wants it, but that is delicious. Wow. And there's very few chefs that I know with a Michelin star that can cook like he can. I'm very passionate about my food. I mean, it makes me happy. Chris is such a perfectionist. He insists on overseeing everything that's cooked in his tiny kitchen. Sorry for taking over. No worries. Chris, like even he wants to check everything from the scratch. Even I think I work with him 20 years, he's gonna he never gonna change. I do strive to be the best. Kuma. I will carry on doing it until till the end. Because this is it. This is my life. And his life's about to be turned upside down by my next challenge. Okay, my diner's gonna be here in just under five minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna be watching everything. I'll be in the kitchen, watching how you work, and I'll be in the dining room, scrutinizing everything. Your reputation is legendary. Merci. Tonight, it's on the line. Chris has just two hours to cook and serve two courses for 30 customers, quite a pressure for a small restaurant, and the clock starts now. Hello. Hello. Hope you enjoy yeah. your evening Very with nice. us. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> Three fish tashini, one lamb. Cod? Cod fish, yeah. yeah. It's quickly become clear that it's not just the kitchen that's stuck in a time warp. Chris, so when you take the orders, there's no computers, it's all handwritten chips? Yes. And you much prefer that as opposed to the 21st century? Well, it works. If it works, don't change it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what am I doing? In a fluster, Chris has put the wrong table number on an order, and now a second order has come in for the same table. And table four, can you remember what he did? Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold on, sir. First error of the evening, that, that's done twice. Don't worry, thank you. Uh, do you prefer this by handwritten like that? Is it easy for you? I got used to it. And... But if they, uh, two tables of four is confusing, right? Yes, it is. If you had a computer, you wouldn't have these problems. Yeah, no, that was my fault. I should have done it, yeah. He's your husband. Yes, I know. He's your head chef. <laughs> He's your toy boy. Look after him. <laughs> there is a choice of three starters. Marinated sardines with spicy sauce, grilled pepper salad with merguez sausages... No, la brique. ..and a brique, a Tunisian speciality pastry filled with tuna, potato and a soft egg, then deep-fried. Chris, Wait. these have been here for two minutes. The egg yolk is runny and I want them to experience the dining. What table number? Table 15 away. Thank Service, you. please. Yeah. Jesus. And you're in the brick. Thank you. You're welcome. So the secret, when you cut in, that, that egg yolk should sort of run all over the tuna. There it is. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah? Really, really good. Not too spicy, not too sweet. Really well balanced. OK. With the starters over, Chris has 30 complex mains to cook on his tiny stove. There are three choices of tagine. Well. Go, 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 go. Cod with king prawns and seafood, chicken with olives and preserved lemons, or lamb in a spicy sauce handed down from his grandmother. 
I'm ready. Although he's got a sous chef and two others to help him, just as I thought, perfectionist Chris wants to do everything himself. OK, thank you. I'll do that. Don't worry. If he carries on like this, food will be delayed. Before I need two couscous. Two couscous. Two couscous. couscous. Now, why don't you do the couscous? Tell me the couscous. Yeah, but he's doing everything. Fish, yeah? oh, oh, what's he doing in your thank section you. now? He's dressing the plate. Sorry. Can't you dress the plates? You've got the one working there, pans everywhere. One, two, three of you do nothing. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the chef. He doesn't want to. C'est bon, monsieur. Yes. C'est bon, monsieur. OK? Ali. Ali. It's the only way I can watch him cook. Wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, yes, sir. Yeah, through the bars. There's more space out here than there is in there. You've got to take some of the responsibility away from him. Oh, come on. Huh? Right. It's incredible. I mean, I thought I was a control freak. Chris takes it to a completely different level, and he just cannot delegate. You're a control freak. Well, I'm not a control freak, but... But you're doing everything? No, well. No, well. Uh... I just want him to open up and talk. The danger of one person. Is it for fish, the gin, finger bowl, including? Oh, fuck me. I'm sure you can get your own finger bowl. Um, do you need them to get you a finger bowl? Do I... You do, yeah? One finger bowl, please, for the fish tagine. This is getting ridiculous. Front of house should be helping the kitchen, not hindering. Oh, finger bowl. Oh, jeez. It's potentially catastrophic because he's so used to that one-man band. Top of the tube station again. You have the drums, the guitar, the organ in the mouth, and he's just playing everything, and everyone's running around him crazy. Oh. Oh. Now he pushes him off his bench and goes in there and chops the peppers, and he's got about 12 things going on the stove. I mean, the guy's a freak. You can see him, can't you? Organising his own funeral, jumping in the coffin and saying goodbye to everyone and saying the prayer at the end. Closing the lid. Merci. Au revoir. Bowl. Thank you very much. Finger bowl. Thank, Thank you. you. Don't bother the kitchen for nothing. Excellent. Coming up to it halfway there and it won't offload. To go in and tell him to do something else. He's got his concentration. I think we need to keep his concentration. But why is he paying all those members of staff and he's doing everything on his shoulders? Chris not letting his brigade near the stove means some customers are still waiting for their mains. It's been a while now. Yeah, 25 minutes, I'd say. This guy won't accept help from anyone. I've got to get through to him somehow. Can you start talking to your brigade? Oh, wait. OK, guys. Let's Hello, start. how are you? Uh, yeah, come on. Hi. Come on, let's go, show. Ali, let's get on with it. I've got the fish. You've oh. got everything. Oh. Chris. Last table. Yeah. Look at me for two seconds. Oh, no. Is there any chance that you can stand over here Wait. and let your sous chef, Wait. your second chef and your third chef, Wait. cook the last table? Go outside and take some fresh air. Just out there. Just, okay. just to two minutes. You come over here and you go and get some fresh air. Okay. Out! Uh. Out! Right, let them do it. OK. Just the last table. I'll kill you guys if you don't do it properly. You're going to be dead in two weeks if you continue like this. Uh -huh. Let it go! OK, last table. How long, uh, Lizzie? Three minutes. Come on, guys. Give one more. Leave him alone. Ah! He's fine. <laughs> that's something I have to work on. But, you know, when you love cooking, that's what you do. Fish. It's delicious. Mm. Really, really good. Very tender, very savoury. Mint really comes through. Full of flavour, a little bit of spice, really nice. The food's wonderful, the place has got so much charm, so much character. <laughs> Such a great welcome. We pull it home here. It's a family run place and we love it. Really good. Service is over and my diners are leaving happy. Okay. Right, first of all. Service, unique. Ladies, well done. Thank you. Yeah, even down to the handwritten tickets. OK, the first ticket went in, second ticket, two tables of four, doesn't matter. And as for the kitchen... <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do I start with you? <laughs> Food is delicious, sublime, just amazing. My biggest problem is you. I want thousands more customers to enjoy your food. But you won't be around if you don't open up and delegate. <laughs> Tell me. I will. You'll be surprised at what it does. Merci. Well done. Seriously, well done. Really good. Thank you. Talk. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What was good for me is realizing that I, sh I must delegate. You take it on board. Yeah. Put it this way, I will take more break. <laughs> The guy's a genius. He cooks like an angel. He hasn't got all the fixtures and fittings and the posh address, but what he has got is an amazing palette. And for me, somebody to watch very closely. For Azu and Momo, my coach trip was like being hit by a hurricane. However, they both came through and they're still standing strong. Now, I've invited them to my office to meet up. With the help of secret diners, I've uncovered how these restaurants perform when they think I'm not around. I sent top food critic Simon Davis to Momo undercover, hoping they'd improved on their service problems. After I left Momo, I sent in my secret diners. <laughs> and they filmed your restaurant undercover. Okay. This is what happened. Hi there, I'm very well. How are you? Very good, thank you. Good. What's your name? Duncan. Duncan. We need to be out of here in about an hour and a half or something. Um, sorry, my English is. Your English is. <laughs> Just a concert. Ah, right. your English is good. <laughs> a little Thanks. Bit, uh, better, yeah. A little bit better. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Let's go for the wood pigeon and the prawns, and then we'll have, I think, a tajid. So we've seen two of the waiters now. Are you ready for the main course? Sorry? Are you ready for the main course? I want at the same time. No, I mean, are you ready to order the menu? We've ordered already. Are oh, you ready? Oh, yeah. Ordered. Sorry. No, we're good. Sometimes we get overwhelmed and we just like to help each other. Yeah. Um, that's, of course, obviously here, lack of communication. Yeah. But if somebody's yeah. in a rush, that gets set across the board to everybody, doesn't it? In yeah. terms of. Ah. The pastilla. Pastilla. Yeah. I don't think it looks wildly appetizing. It looks a little bit dry. The wood pigeon's been minced to such a degree you can't really distinguish it from any other meat. In my opinion, I think mincing up the wood pigeon is an, is an error. They didn't, they didn't mince out that little piece of wood pigeon. Shouldn't leave bones in it. Annoying. It's also bloody dangerous. Bone? Yeah, it's one of the things where... Clumsy? Yeah, it, but to, to, be, to be honest with you, it does happen ever so often, but it, it's just yeah. care and attention. Could I have a little side order of tabbouleh? Tabbouleh? Yeah, just a little, a little bit of tabbouleh. Oh, we'll ask you. It was almost as if he was too busy to, to deal with us. Oh, no, I wanted... Oh. I've got some of that. Is that some of No, I, want, I wanted a little bowl of tabbouleh. Tabbouleh? Tabu yeah. yeah okay. But it is a bit perplexing. We've had two occasions now where they've been a mistake because they're not communicating with each other. Excuse me, I ordered some tabbouleh. I wondered if it was coming. To be, to be honest with you, I'm now confused about what I've told which waiter. Ah, it's my tabbouleh. Thank you. So the tabbouleh's arrived, but it was a good ten minutes and I had to ask two different waiters and it got delivered by a third. Fragmented service as opposed to two waiters looking after that. They've been interrupted four or five times with five different waiters. It's a busy restaurant and, you know, you've got to... Nobody's took control. It's no excuse. They haven't filled our water up since we arrived. I'm just going to leave that there. It's in a very prominent position. We'll just see if they fill it up. Can I have a little more water? It's over an hour since I had any water, and now I've asked for some, and it still hasn't come. Excuse me. Can I have some water? Ah, the water. I mean, just because it's a Moroccan restaurant doesn't mean we have the water retention ability of a camel. <laughs> sadly. Oh, we've been waiting an hour for water. They shouldn't be waiting that long for water. Definitely not. I mean, for me, wash that, it's very, you know... Um, yeah, disappointing. He's met so many waiters and none of them noticed that the, the, the water glass they were empty. But you are somewhat overstaffed with bodies there. When you've had the eighth, the ninth, the tenth waiter hit the table, you feel a bit sort of, Jesus, you know, I'm just, you know, on a conveyor belt here and just being passed along to the next person. As a restaurant that can transport you to another place, you can eat good food, perfectly good food. 
you can have fun here. And if going out and eating out in restaurants is about having fun and excitement and sharing that with your friends, then this ticks a lot of boxes. The food's good. Bloody good. A few areas of tightening up. Service needs to come together. Glamorous, great, attentive individuals, but they need to play as a team. And then when the team's all singing off that hymn sheet, you've got one amazing restaurant. It's good to get constructive criticism. We go back and we sort it out. That's what we get paid for. Sometimes it only to hurt the most, but you just get back up again. Exactly. It's more stronger. It's the North African heat of my best restaurant competition and charming family runner zoo from West London are going head to head with central London celebrity giant Momo. Don't start 14, don't start six year, please. Leave him alone! Ah! He's fine! <laughs> now it's the turn of a zoo to hear some difficult home truths thanks to my undercover secret diner. Food and recipe writer Sarah Durden Robertson has travelled in North Africa and sampled the cuisine firsthand. Azu will have to be on top form to impress her. What I'd like to tell you is that you've actually been tested twice. Have we? Mm, that's news. My undercover team Oi? went to your restaurant. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. And this is what happened. Hello. Table for two, Duncan. Yes, please. Thank you. Maybe, uh, well, maybe the sardines and the olives, I think. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Do you know what? Could I swap two of those? And... It must be a video of already now. Sorry? It must be cooked now. Oh, could I have the prawns, though, instead, and the burak? I don't know if the chef will ask the chef, but I don't know. <laughs> OK, if you could ask. OK. Mm. If the customer changes their mind, mm. that's their prerogative, because they're paying. Mm -hmm. right? And we have to show that level of flexibility. It's, a, it's already done. It's a, what's already done? The, the sardines and the bagnoche. It's already done. Lovely. Gosh, that was very just, quick. Just... OK, well, could I still... Do you mind if I still change? Change what? So I, I'd like to not have the sardines. Well, the sardines is already done. OK, but could I order something else? What? As an extra order, then, could I just have the burek? Yes. Rule number one, never humiliate a customer. Yeah. And already she's been made to feel mm. vulnerable, yeah. awkward and very silly. Yeah. All because she just wanted to change her dish. Mm. Hello, yes. I'm sorry, this is just a bit too spicy for me. That is, the, in the menu, it's spicy hot. Yes, I know, I know, and he did say. Yes. But I thought it's actually just too spicy for me. I'll give you another one, but I charge you for this one. OK. That's no problem. Yeah. Wrong. When customers arrive in a restaurant for the very first time, yeah. and they make a mistake on their order, yeah. we have to be prepared yeah. to change. Yeah. You want the customers to come back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Watch what happens next. This one, a steak away. Maybe he can have it tomorrow or something. Ah, oh, that's really yeah. kind. Thank Hello. you. Yes, because I've hardly touched it. You're oh, very good. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Lucky you. That's one. Thanks. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, that's incredibly quick. Uh, How did he do that? Well, you, you have to do it with him, eating at the same time. So I just... Had to speed the process. Thank That's you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. This is absolutely delicious. I have been to Marrakesh. Some of the best food I've ever had. And this takes me right back. So, you pulled it back in a very charming way. See. And look at the difference mm -hmm. in what happened when we changed that dish. Yeah. Amazing. I love this place. Chris is amazing. So charming. Mm -hmm. Your customers are in love with you and your food, mm. OK? And if you want to charge them, yeah. ring me up and I'll pay for the fucking dish, OK? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a good team. I trust my team. I believe in my team. And 
that did happen, it won't happen again, and that's it. Now is, let's see what's coming ahead. Azu and Momo have found my test really tough, but honestly, I do admire their fighting spirit. Now it's time for the final challenge, as both teams cross London to come and cook in my flagship restaurant, and this is the very last chance they've got to shine. The test is to create one mind-blown dish worthy of my Michelin-starred restaurant. I want them to really push themselves and cook like they've never done before. Only one restaurant can go through to the semi-finals. This is what dreams are made of, a farmer's boy. I mean, I've been dipped out as a butcher, so this is, this is, you know, to make them proud as well. I want to win, I really want to win. Being in Ramsey's restaurant, it's an honour, and I'm very, very happy. I think um, I'm not going to disappoint him tonight. <laughs> it is a very, very important day. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Right, you're in this competition because both your restaurants are unique. The excitement behind the North African cuisine and what it can deliver in textures, flavours, spice is mind-blowing. This is the dish of your life. Right. Because this is what's going to catapult one of you into the semi-final. Make sure it's you. Good luck. I've asked them to come up with one exquisite dish featuring lamb, a star ingredient of North African cuisine. On one side with the zoo, you've got traditional. And on the other side, with Momo, you've got this new wave, a light style of North African cuisine and completely opposite ends of the spectrum. To help me choose who's best, both teams' creations will be served to highly distinguished guests, including Elsie Awusu, director of the Royal African Society, Larvi Ramiki, head of culture and press at the Moroccan Embassy, and distinguished Moroccan chef and restaurateur, Joseph Balilti. The front of house teams from both restaurants are also dining here today. David is an excellent chef. I know everything's gonna be delicious. It's like a holiday cooking for 20, I'm usually cooking for 200. So it should technically be a walk in the park. It's an enormous challenge, but I think he will cope very well. Sugar, hamis, where is the hamis? Gonna have a tray, I mean, for God's sake. My one big concern today with Azu is he's been so used to cooking these little bolt hole. It's a completely different set today. I hope it doesn't get the better of him. And he just stays focused. Are you a little bit lost in the kitchen with all the space? Or are you happy with something I so big? I am fine. He'll be fine. Excellent. Chris is cooking a traditional spicy lamb tagine served with couscous, but he's not stopping there. I asked you to cook a stunning lamb dish. Right. You've gone that extra mile and you're making bread. Right. The authentic semolina bread will be served with fresh hummus, a unique spice mixture of tomatoes, roasted peppers, chilies, and coriander. Pick up the table four. Oh, yeah. Azu, lamb tagine. Yes, chef. Momo, four stunning lamb. Yes, chef. Yes. Thank you. David from Momo is preparing a delicious roast loin of lamb with aubergine ragu, barley couscous, and a lamb's liver with harissa, wrapped in spinach and deep fried in tempura batter. I want to do something else in North African food. I want to show the next level, the next dimension we can go. Lamb's liver tempura. And you're wrapping the liver in? Yeah, some spinach. Wrapping spinach. Spinach. I'm wrapping the spinach and deep fry it. Hopefully right. it's about 50, 51 seconds. Yeah. We timed it last time. Christ. So you really are pushing the boat out in a big way. This is incredible. He's pushing the boundary out with the lamb's liver, which is not everyone's cup of tea. I just hope in an hour's time that doesn't come back to bite him on the arse. Give me an estimated time for four tagine. Five minutes, Max, chef. If there's ever a night to work as a team, this is it. But as the pressure builds, Chris is up to his old tricks. No, no, just make it ready for me. I'll show you first. No, open. He's such a control freak. Uh, wait, wait, I'll check. He can't stop and he can't help himself. He wants to do everything. No, 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 no. You don't touch the plates. Yep, OK. As whose first dishes hit the pass within minutes. Jesus. God, that was quick. OK, service, please. First table coming now, Rob. Let's go. Azu. Yes, chef. Four covers table six. Pass. Chris. Yes, chef. It's dinner, yeah? Take your time, yes? Bad problem, oh, chef. Service, All please. Right. Let's go. Chris is cooking faster than fucking Usain Bolt runs. He's just totally focused, refuses to talk to me, and his head is steeped right in that couscous. And for Tajin, here we are. Thank you. Let's go.
Amazing, really. The bread is bread is like I remember my grandmother. Mm. That's happened. It tastes too amazing. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. The sauce was too much sauce for me. Ready for my taste? Yeah. Drowned. Yeah. Chef David's modern take on North African cuisine is a lot more sophisticated. Seven up, chef. Yeah, good. The five elements to his dish require delicate timing, and sous chef Philip is getting ahead of himself. Chef, no, don't slice too soon. Not ready. Not ready, chef. Not ready. Don't go. Yeah. I'll give you 90 seconds before I want the lamb. Come on, listen to David. Philip, slow down, please. Don't slice that lamb too early. Yes, sir. Yeah. When David gives you the call. Yeah, I want that juice, yeah, in amongst that couscous. Not left on the board, yes? Yeah. Please. And you know, Philip, you can leave it resting here. Leave it fat side down like that. Yeah. And all it's going to do is render and it'll stay nice and warm. See what I'm saying? Thank you. Yeah? Yes. Slow that one down, Chef. Yeah. Chef, slow that one down. Yes. At this stage in the competition, David can't afford to make mistakes. Philip? Yeah? One more aubergine. One's not good. Two more aubergine. Come on, wait Yes, sir. To get every dish perfect, Momo need to pull together as a team. Cus, cus. Yes, sir. Go on, Philip, give me a hand dressing as well, please, yes? Yes. Yeah, like a proper teamwork. Good. In the middle, so you can work off both trays. There you go. Put the lamb on. Yes. Lamb. Ah, fuck. And they've pulled it off. Uh, David, they look fantastic. They look very nice. Oh, beautiful colours. OK, service, please. Trays up, please. Table two, please, yes? Fantastically ornate looking food. Very nice. It's just that musty, smoky feel. It's something a bit different. We kind of all agreed that liver is not our favourite thing on the list, but the way he executed it was excellent. It melts in your mouth. Mm. Mm. The flavours aren't quite as complex. The liver is a little bit overcooked. It's a bit dry. It is, yes. The last of Chris's exquisite tagines are flying out of the kitchen. Thank you. He has just one table to serve. Here we are. Next, chef. That smells amazing. It's delicious. Thank you. That was fast. It was good. Next. Thank you. Yeah, breathe. Take some fresh air. Last table, David, yeah? Lovely. Well done. Keep the clue, chef. Well done, well done. Service is over, and it's time to find out what my distinguished guests think about these two extraordinary dishes, starting with a zoo. Right. How was your lamb shank? The lamb shank was my favourite. As really? soon as I experienced that sauce, I knew that was it. Yeah. Authentic and delicious. I just enjoyed it for mm -hmm. what it was. Very nice. simple, perfectly blended. I dipped the bread in, first mouthful. Oh. I like them both, but nice. I thought the, the Momo dish was fresh, it was beautifully presented. It was just altogether delightful. I prefer the Azu dish. You could just imagine yourself being in the old sook. Definitely I preferred, I mean, Momo's dish because the meat was very well cooked. Uh, I'm used to Moroccan cuisine because I'm Moroccan myself, so it is really a sort of uh, a nouvelle cuisine. The tempura liver, I was not expecting it to be quite as mouth-wateringly sort of melt on the tongue as it was. It was really, really delicious. I love the Azu dish. I adored the flavours. They were so powerful. I wanted more. <laughs> My diner's comments confirm the brilliance of the food served here by both Azu and Momo. I think the dish went extremely well. I've tasted it. I'm very happy with it. I'm happy. Well, you know, there's always room for improvements. But well, what made me proud is we've come together. I'm really proud. Thank you, Chef. Both these teams of amazing chefs have approached North African cuisine in very different ways. Let's see if the traditional is going to beat the modern. Let's hope the traditional is better. Now I have an incredibly difficult decision to make because only one restaurant can go through to the semi-finals. My two top North African contenders, Momo and Azu, both from London, have thrown everything at the final challenge. They are both outstanding restaurants, but over the course of my three tests, they've both made mistakes. I'm about to tell one of them they've cooked in this competition for the last time. To help me make my choice, I need to taste both dishes, starting with David's from Momo. It looks modern, 21st century, and stunning. Very pretty, almost too pretty for North African cuisine. Mm. Lamb's delicious. I mean, really delicious. Delicate, cooked beautifully. Liver, difficult one to get right. Not only that, but it's tempered, and you don't think of sort of um, fried liver. 
with North African cuisine. However, the combination, baba noosh and the barley couscous works brilliantly well. I've got an issue with the liver. However, the lamb is cooked perfectly and it's a loiner lamb, so it's, it's been shown respect. Authentic, classic, untouched. Meat falling off the bone. That's delicious. I mean, really delicious. Lamb is just melting in your mouth. It needs to be a little bit more trimmed, excess fat removed. However, sauce is incredible. You can see there's 30 years of experience into that because it's just packed full of flavor. This is such an amazing contrast. And Momo's interpretation is modern, fresh, fragrant. Delivers a big punch. Uncertain about the liver. Everything else, it is delicious. Azuz is rich, authentic, and just steeped with passion, like him. And right now, it's, I'm stuck. Do I go forward with the modernization of North African cuisine, or do I stay in the history of something classically done? It's too tight to call. Two fantastic North African restaurants, but only one can win a place in the semi-final. Right. What I saw today was two completely different dishes, but done with pride, history, and innovation. Azu, you stuck to your roots. I think you're back in Algeria. Yes, chef. And you're back with your mother and your your grandma, and you were you were there. Yes, chef. I can identify the authenticity, the classic style, and the richness of that. Beautiful. David, it's very rare to find a British chef cooking out of his comfort zone. But tonight, you came and you, you moved the goalposts. You modernized North African cuisine. And it was done with flair, which I didn't expect you to do. However, this round is not won on a single dish. Just think of the journey so far in this competition. Go back to the coachload of diners, turning up all at the same time. The pressure of serving all those guests in under two hours was a nightmare. Then, all of a sudden, you can let your hair down and let's get back to cooking. And then you've been secretly filmed. Both restaurants came through that test, and they both had their highs, and they both had their lows. Listening to the diners, Tasting both dishes based on everything we've done in this competition. The restaurant going through to the semi finals. Congratulations to Azu. David, don't stop that level of pushing to the extreme. Well done. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thank you. I'm gutted at the moment. Um, no, I'm gutted. No. I've got a lot of fight left in me. Give me another chance. I'll, just, I'll do it again. Congratulations. Yeah? Very, very proud. So pleased, because, he, you know, it means such a lot. I'm sorry to see Momo go. David is a brave and passionate chef who is pushing the boundaries of North African cuisine. But Azu are a truly fabulous restaurant, and I can't wait to go back there. That's why they've gone through. Right now, this competition is only going to get tougher, and I hope they don't let me down. My nationwide restaurant competition is entering the home straight, so tonight it's the last heat. So far, i found my best Italian restaurant, Casimir from Bristol. My top Indian, Prashad from Bradford. My favourite Chinese, Yu and Yu in Blackburn. For Thai, Nam Jim from St Andrews. For British, the milestone in Sheffield. Flying the flag for French, Winchingham Fields from Lincolnshire. And my best North African restaurant, Azu from West London. First, it's do or die with the last place in my semi-finals up for grabs from your favourite Spanish restaurants. Over the last couple of years, there's been a real growth in Spanish cooking in the UK. There's so much more to it than just paella. 
The Spaniards are hugely proud of their culinary heritage, but also great innovators. The best Spanish restaurants combine tradition and modern techniques to keep you coming back for more. I've handpicked two amazing Spanish restaurants from hundreds of nominations to battle it out. From the heart of the capital, it's Fino, the established pioneer of modern tapas in the UK. Are we the best Spanish restaurant in London? No. Yes. There you go. They're locking horns with newcomer El Parata de Tapas in Notting Hill. Flying the flag for a whole new generation of Spanish cuisine. Vamos, 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 vamos. We always go that extra mile, not just me, everybody. Unas megas más. I'm going to push both the Spanish contenders to the very edge with three incredible challenges. First, it's every restaurant's worst nightmare. 30 ravenous customers will arrive and order all at the same time. Stop number one is Fino, a sleek and stylish tapas restaurant in central London. Opened seven years ago, and it's owned by two brothers, Sam and Eddie. Now, the Hart Boys have really helped change and transform our perception on Spanish cooking. They have the most amazing female head chef downstairs who runs her kitchen with such military precision. My diners tonight are in for one hell of a treat. Good to see you How both. Are you? Nice are you to well? see you. Yes, very well. Gordon, this is Nieves Balagan. Hi. How are you? And Alicia. And is the team all female? Not all. <laughs> Not all. Yeah. The boss is a female. Yeah. That's enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> and, and the rest of them are terrified. I, I can <laughs> imagine. They, they don't put a finger out of place. Yeah, really. Surprise, surprise. Brothers Sam and Eddie have restaurants in their blood. Raised around their parents' missing starred restaurant and hotel. We grew up from a pretty tender age in restaurants the whole time. Literally from the moment we could hold a knife or pour wine at drinks parties and hand round the olives. In just seven years, the brothers have built their own empire of high-end London restaurants, renowned for their vibrant atmosphere and fantastic service. Fino's got an amazing energy. You can sit about 90 people at once, and they're all having three to four tapas each. You know, it's something like 700 dishes coming out of the kitchen, so there's a great buzz to the room. <laughs> Tough and talented head chef Nieves has been cooking exquisite classic tapas at Fino since it opened. Many of her dishes inspired by her Basque roots. I need one crispy anchovies. I need one octopus. For me, the most important thing is the taste. No more than three ingredients. That's what I like in the plate. That's perfection. We're actually quite a traditional Spanish restaurant. You know, we're not trying to break the mold. What we like to do is, is just source the best ingredients we can and cook them simply. So the secret is just to let that duck egg yolk ooze. It's delicious. I mean, who would have thought that peas and broad beans could be so exciting? That's one portion. Well, I suppose it's one tapas portion that's shared, isn't it? I, uh, I wouldn't share that with anybody. No. This woman is truly gifted. Thank you. Could her incredible passion take Fino all the way in this competition? My diner's going to be arriving just under five minutes from now. Neves, I can feel that adrenaline, yeah, from here. I can see it <laughs> pulsating through those veins. You could probably do this standing on your head alone with no one in the kitchen. However, yeah, just, just do what you do best. And good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. They're going to need it, because in just a few minutes, we've got company. My 30 discerning diners will arrive and order en masse. So far, every restaurant in the competition has struggled with this challenge, and I fear even a slick operation like Fino is going to feel the heat. OK, guys, in one minute, OK? The customers, they come in in one minute, yeah? Yes, sir. Hi there. Hi there. Let, let me show you through. Okay, I want you to start to cut the bread, please. The customers are here. Neves is poised for action like a caged tiger. Would you like to talk you through the menu and explain what we've got on this evening? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the turbot's fantastic. Um... In the dining room, purveyors of charm, Sam and Eddie are already breaking the ice. We've got a poached duck egg um, with fresh peas, broad beans, ham on and some fresh mint. The courgette flowers are stuffed with goat's cheese with a little bit of thyme and shallots and then dipped in tempura and deep fried. The brothers are clearly just as passionate about tonight's menu as their head chef. I need two in total, yeah? OK, I need two in total. Neves Basque roots are coming through loud and clear in the simple but exquisite seasonal delicacies of a quality rarely found outside Spain. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
This is really nice. Well, they look good. Yeah. Presentation looks fantastic. Mm. This is delicious. Absolutely fantastic. One of the best dishes I've actually ever had. Just over 45 minutes gone, and this place is absolutely rocking. Customers loving the food. Great atmosphere in there. But right over there on that hot plate, that's where the real Spanish fire is because she is over everything. Every plate is immaculate. Okay, guys, I need yeah, one more roll. How are you, Alicia? Yes. One now, okay? Yes, one now. Nervias is seasoning every dish, tasting every sauce. Alicia, too much olive oil in there, okay? Very tiny, very tiny, very tiny olive oil. Like a true artist, she has complete command over every plate. Zero mas, zero mas. This woman is a culinary Picasso. Okay, start to play the potatoes now, yeah? Yes. Okay, one turbo, two suckling pigs, one broad bean is table 14. Yes, sir. Best part of the, of the cooking. Okay, Alicia. Does she normally do everything like this? No one's allowed to touch anything but her. <laughs> yeah. you just pass everything to her and she does everything, yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, one gas patch on addition, please. Yes. Yeah. She's a control freak. She's worse than me. <laughs> uh, every night she's like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's really passionate about me, you know. She's very passionate. Really, really, really passionate. I can't fault Nervez's dedication, but I can see a problem. She's sending out dishes as soon as they're ready rather than ensuring everyone on the table is fed together. We were going to have uh, two starters the evening before, so we wanted them both to arrive at the same time so we could get them um, stuck in. Those not seem to be arriving at present. Where's the squid? I don't know. Have we asked the kitchen? Uh, no, because I see... No, 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 no. We, we have to ask this. Is. Eddie's on it. But I've clocked another lady waiting for her turbot. Where's that last uh, main course there for the five ladies? They, uh... This sort of issue could ruin a whole table's dining experience, and Sam knows it. Is there a last course on table nine coming? I think that they should serve all the food together, and I didn't want my friend's food getting cold while I was waiting for mine, so yeah. a little bit miffed. Are you one more time, Alicia? Yes. No, one. Don't make me choose. Toma, loco. Toma. Neves is determined not to let a little slip up like this ruin her service. Within minutes, two hot dishes are winging their way out to the dining room. Tarbot, they were 21, OK? There we go. Hey, let's go. Sorry about that, madam. And just to make sure there's no hard feelings, Sam is on the charm offensive. Do you want me to show you how you fill it, the talent? Do you know your way around more or less? Do you do it? I'm very happy to do it. Yeah. Some people like to fiddle around and do it themselves. Others prefer it finished. Thank you. Thank you. Nicely done. Excellent. It's meaty, but it's a very light flavour. There's a lot of vinegar and olive oil that they put with it, as they do in Spain. Um, and it, but it, it doesn't overpower the fish. It's really, really lovely. Second course, Tarbo Sackling Peak. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. All the starters gone? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. We do a second course now. And in the French, I want to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tarbot, OK? Eight tarbot. As well as the delicious turbot. For the main course, Nervez is serving a speciality, roast suckling pig, mouth-wateringly sweet and tender. It smells fucking amazing. It's another Spanish showstopper. The suckling pig's fantastic. Full of flavour, really well cooked. The simple potatoes that it, it comes on are really exquisite. OK, second course, Alicia, three tarbots. That's delicious. Yep. The whole thing just melts in your mouth. And more importantly, it's got a really nice fragrant sort of well thyme, bay leaf and rosemary leaf. This could well be the best food I've seen so far in this competition. The longer I'm here, the more excited I'm getting. How many more main courses have you got to go? That's it. That's it? Yeah. All gone? All gone. Service is almost over. But with the combination of delicious desserts and Samanetti's unfaltering charm, the dining room is still buzzing. Our mother um, grew up in Mallorca, but she's actually half Scottish, half Bulgarian. So we sort of look Spanish, but aren't at all. The fish was beautifully cooked. I had the turbot, I couldn't fault it, it was beautiful. The food was fantastic today, absolutely brilliant. Delivered on flavour, and I'm very, very impressed. Thank you very Good much. Night. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Right. Um, okay. 
What can I pick on? What can I say that we have to improve on here? There was a moment in service tonight, service gets awkward, and that was just after the starters had gone. That's the only awkward moment I saw. The food's amazing. You can smile now. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, 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 you don't do it often, but you can now. Yeah. Yes? The service. Tonight, you two just raise the bar. Good job. Thank Brilliant, you. Thank, thank you. you. In my quest to find the best restaurant in Britain, my posse of hungry diners are riding into town. About to roll up at the second Spanish contender, fighting for the last place in the semi-final. The pioneering El Parata de Tapas, or the pirate in London's hip Notting Hill, is managed by Roberto, and the kitchen run by Madrid boy Omar. It's only been open for two years already. It's got rave reviews. This young Spanish chef, he's only 26, and this guy really does have talent. Hola. How are you? Very well, and Good to see you. Very well indeed, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Small restaurant, small kitchen. Big passion. Big passion. Show that on every plate. Well, of course. Very well. Okay. Head chef Omar has a hugely impressive CV. Having worked for the celebrated molecular gastronome Baron Adrian of El Bule in Spain, voted one of the best restaurants in the world. It was a tremendous experience for me that has influenced the rest of my cooking and the rest of my career. This young pretender has an ultra-modern approach to tapas and uses molecular cooking techniques to take Spanish cuisine into the 21st century with huge style. I like beautiful things in life, <laughs> as we all do. So I think it is great when you are sitting down in your table and something beautiful comes into it, even though you don't expect it. Omar's experimental methods can turn a traditional dish on its head like his jellied gazpacho. It's very clever, because you've got this nice chilled jelly. Tasting exactly the same, but a completely different texture. Yeah. In his mission to stand out, Omar bravely embraces daring ingredients like his confit coxcomb, the crest that comes from the head of the cockerel, which most British butchers throw away. They actually give it to us for free really? all the time. Because no one's ordering them? No. I don't think there's many chefs anywhere in the country that has free ingredients that can be clever enough to charge money for it. Smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> this competition has just gone up a notch on the back of the Antonio Banderas are cooking. Little bastard. Far too good looking to be a chef. Vamos, 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 vamos. He has passion, guts, and a huge pair of cojones. Service! Omar will need balls of steel tonight. He's got just two hours to serve all 30 of my discerning diners and stake his claim to be the most avant-garde Spanish chef in Britain. OK, just under five minutes, my diners will be here. 30 of them. Those dishes you cooked for me earlier were like little sort of miniature works of art. So make sure my diners have the exact same experience. Good luck. Let's do it. Thank you. We will put all our effort, all our knowledge, all our commitment to make this happen. I really want to win this. <laughs> Omar's definitely not playing it safe, with a pig strada capaccio and his coxcomb longestine moloso, a type of Spanish risotto. I've got this image of this chicken's head just being ripped off. <laughs> is, is that what you ordered? Basically, coxcomb is just the top of the, of the cloth. They're really tender, really, really amazing. With some able guidance from manager Roberto, the overtly avant-garde menu is creating quite a stir. It's a pig strutter. Oh, why not for me? I really need to. Are you going to have it? I'm going to give it a try. There's no point in OK, first check. Dos arroces, dos lentejas. With all 30 orders taken, can this young buccaneer seize this enormous challenge and lead his crew to a resounding success? Two migas. Another pig trotters, unas manitas de cerdo. Service. This is complex food, and a lot could go wrong. But so far, Omar's as cool as a cucumber in his gazpacho. 
These plates are immaculate. I mean, we've just started service and we're only half an hour into it, but composed, yeah, bloody good. Service! But the food looking absolutely spotless. But will his unorthodox dishes be too experimental for my diner's tastes? The carpaccio of pig's trotter. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. The texture takes a bit of getting used yeah, to, yeah, but the totally. flavours are incredible. I never thought I'd say I'd eat a pig's trotter. <laughs> Customers are loving the food, and it's not exactly what they expected. Listen to the atmosphere. You know, anyone would think there's music playing in the background. The music are the customers. They're happy. Even the coxcomb Molosso is going down well. But each dish must be made to order and is putting pressure on the kitchen. The rice is popular tonight, no? Yeah, it's selling quite a lot. And the coxcomb, I think, challenge the customers yeah. sometimes, so... Well, it's a rare ingredient they very rarely see. The kitchen sends out the last coxcomb Molosso. That's edible, right? It is, yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. It's really succulent, really tasty and really nice, yeah. Go for it. That's nicer than I ever indeed. imagined it to be. Yeah, it, yeah it's fantastic. Good. But Roberto fails to notice the happy diner's neighbour has yet to be fed. I think there's just been a, a small mix-up. My, my main course hasn't arrived yet. Customers happy? Very happy. Yeah? How many tables you got left to go? Uh, this hurts. No more hot food? No more hot food. Really? Finally, Roberto spots the problem. Oh, shit. There's no way Omar can get this out quickly. Bit of butter. Everyone's already finished theirs. Sorry, Mark. That's all right. What happened? I did a mistake. Because of the rushing, everything came at once. But yeah, the most important thing is to do the food correctly, even though they need to wait a couple of minutes extra. It's fine. It's not until desserts start to leave the kitchen that the delayed Molosso is sent. Venga, llévate este arroz a la mesa 23, por favor. It's that plate there, so you can track out you. Chew, not just swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Was it worth the wait? Absolutely worth the wait, but just a shame it took um, all you guys to finish yours. But that's the only let down. It does, the food's fantastic. El Parata's near faultless performance has been down to Omar's sheer skill and passion. He's pulled off the remarkable, making humble and unappealing ingredients taste like a million dollars. This detail is a piece of art on the plate. It looks beautiful, it tastes beautiful. I think the food here is absolutely incredible. Some things that I never would have thought of eating, but actually worked really, really well. Tough challenge. My diners are over the moon. Well done. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank Wait for the final. <laughs> yes? Yeah. You're already there, are you? We are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I love that confidence. It's almost like you've won the World Cup. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Excellent. Both Fino and El Parata thrived in my coach trip. They performed quite brilliantly. Now I've invited them both to come and see me to review their performances. At least that's what I've told them. What neither team realizes is that they've already faced my second very revealing test. I asked my secret diners to visit their restaurants. I've seen exactly what each restaurant is like when they're not in the spotlight. First, I deployed Sarah Durden Robinson, a top food consultant. Armed with secret recording equipment, she never shirks in a mission to be a tricky customer. Could I swap two of those? Could I have the prawns instead and the burek? She scrutinized established heavyweight Fino. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? Are you well? Good to see you. Good to see you. That was a big test, but unknown to yourselves. After I visited, I sent in a secret diner. And this is what they saw. You ready? My heart is beating. Your heart is beating? What have I touched? Hello. Hello. I've touched. 
touch something. I don't know what it is. My hand's covered in oil. Oh my god. I don't know Excuse what. Me. No, that's okay. I don't know where it's come from. Oh, it's the side of the table. Don't worry, it's just all here. It's got all oil on it, so I can see. It's not brilliant, my first experience in the restaurant. They tidied it up very quickly, but as she was doing it, I noticed that my glass isn't clean either, so I'm also sending that back. That's not very good. At least it looks pretty. Oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Actually, I know I've started badly. <laughs> It's not great, there was oil on the table, the glass was dirty, but she could not have handled it better. Thank you. Bad start. Dirty table. Not a good start. Dealt with amazingly. Bang, just like that. If we were to have sherry, we were saying a, a manzanilla or a fino or an amontillado, what's the difference? What the... between manzanilla and fino, there is not much difference. It's just the but the village they are very close, so yep. all of them they have this saltiness flavor. Yep. We have one, we they only sell it for two months a year, which is this one. Would it be possible maybe to try a little bit? Oh, would you rather try this one? Yes, please. And, I'm one of the man. Well, one of the manzanillas. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to Thank you. I've been to Jerez, which is the sherry capital of Spain. Gone through all the classes, all the tastings, but she actually managed to explain it very well in about three sentences. And <laughs> kind of thing, why didn't I just come here and speak to her? I would have had a sherry masterclass in seconds. So nice to get that level of excitement and amazing insight and very knowledgeable. Nice touch. Ah, oh, thank you. Slopped on the table, looked at himself in the mirror, didn't look at, at the table. Yeah, come on, come on. Oh, wow, okay. So, we say potato? We no, ordered... uh, okay, don't worry. I think, yeah, I don't think we ordered that. Thank you. This guy trying to give my razor clams to the wrong table. He doesn't have a clue, but I wouldn't have him out here at all. My God, and it's not even my restaurant, but it pains me. Of course, we don't want that to happen. Definitely not. Anyone who comes into contact with with, with the customers needs to know what they know what they're talking about. Engaged. Next, Sarah's going to play one of the dirtiest tricks in the secret diner's book. Oh no! Putting one of her own hairs in the food. I was so 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 pissed off. There's a hair in the salad. Oh, my. Oh, I just yeah. wondered if I could swap it. Yeah, Thank you. No, that's okay. Thank you. They've handled that really well. The waitress has taken it away. She showed it to the manager who had a good look at it. They looked at each other appalled, but she's taken it straight back to the kitchen. Sorry about that. Mm. I don't know where it's from. It's not from the kitchen for sure because they don't have a strong hair. So, I don't know. Anyway, I told the chef to make another one. Thank you. Another one. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Apologetic. Bang, straight away. Customer at ease. Dealt with brilliantly. Do you know what? That's a great stuff. Dirty table, dirty bottle. Then things started out. The food was fantastic. The waitress was absolutely amazing. How the fact that it was very difficult. Thank you. 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 Anna, who's looking after them, did a great job. But I think sort of seeing the junior guy not up to speed is something that we can do something about and, you know, something that we, we ought to improve on, definitely. Tough test. We're only human and we don't make mistakes, clearly. But it's how you handle them. You know, we've got a couple of things to, you know, to take away and work on. Of course, we were disappointed it wasn't 100% perfect, but I think most of the team really do know what they're doing and, and you know it's a reasonably easy job for us to make sure that they all do you know it's like a good challenge for us over the next few weeks our next uh, challenge is going to be tough and uh, we must do everything perfect so i want to win now this and i will love to win and i hope we win next my undercover spy gets the cold shoulder from el parata that's facebook on the computer, 
checking out his mates, and still, my secret diners without the wine. Renowned Spanish restaurant Fino okay, is locking horns with young pretenders El Parata de Tapas. Vamos, vamos, vamos. They're fighting for the last remaining place in my semi finals. El Parata's 26 year old head chef Omar, sous chef Adrian, and front of house manager Ricardo put in a hugely impressive performance in my first test. But they're about to find out I've been spying on them. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. I have something to tell you. You've been tested twice. Because after I left, I then sent in my secret diners to make sure it wasn't a freak night. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what happened. El Parata, here we go. Professional snooper Simon Davis makes his living spotting faults with restaurants, food and service. I told him not to hold back when he visited El Parata. Mm. It's lovely, actually, that cheese, that Babylon cheese is really... gets in your mouth and then just keeps going, just keeps, keeps delivering. Now, this will be a real telltale sign. This is octopus with paprika on and then capers. Very, very, very good. That's one of the best dishes I've had for some time, actually. They know what they're doing. Loves the food. Some of the most exciting food he's ever eaten. But what about the service? The waiter put the food down about 11 minutes ago. He hasn't come back at all. Not once to either see how we're getting on, engage us in conversation. It tells me he doesn't really care. He's just walked by again, didn't say anything to us. I'm not feeling hugely welcome here as a customer at the moment. That may very well be because he doesn't like the cut of my jib. But I've been looking around the other tables and no one's really getting particularly good service. Good food is nothing without great service. They go hand in glove. Now, what have we got here? I think that's cod. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because they're not olives. They're raisins. There's no peppers. And there's no capers. It's a Trey's description this year. So yeah. it, says it says it's with capers and olives, but I see a small amount of sultanas. Uh, I think we don't change the menu. I see you've changed the dish. Yeah. But it's the old dish on here. Yeah. I'm allergic to those. I can't eat sultanas. Do you want me to take away the on the plate or just this stuff? No, I can't. It's been on the, if it's been on the plate, I can't I can't have it. Yeah, we were keen on that one. You can't just offer to take the sultanas off and bring back the plate. Also bear in mind that now we've been chatting and looking at it and stuff, it's cold now. Cold on the menu. So with the capers and peppers arrives with raisins. What happened there? My fault. Not updating the menu. Not changing the menu. Just uh, yeah. Just I mean, uh, how uninterested was that waiter? He's like a zombie. Yeah, I feel quite ashamed when I've seen this sort of uh, attitude in the service. Guys, I've got a cool, hip, amazing restaurant there. You're sat on something potentially brilliant. And if someone wants to turn up to work and talk like that to customers, get in washing fucking dishes. I'm going to get a glass of, glass of red wine. Which would you advise? Come on, the menu, the menu one's quite nice. No, I'm going to have this one, the Remy. Sure. Yep, thank you. Just a glass. Mm. <clears throat> Where's my, where's my glass of, of red wine? That's Facebook. On the computer, checking out his mates, and still, my secret diner's without the wine. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I ordered a glass of red wine. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <sighs> 
So, uh, so I, I hope I didn't interrupt you. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> What kind of impression does that serve to customers when a waiter's sat there on a computer? I think it just over 40 quid a head for the quality of the food and the, the ability of the chef. It's good value. Where it suddenly stops being good value is when you have service like the service that we've seen today. It is such a shame to see fantastic food let down by extremely poor service. All the hard work, um, especially these guys put in the kitchen, going just down the drain by bad attitude and just horrified. You've got every right to feel let down, but it's not over and done with. It's still very strong in this competition and you need to bounce back. Love to do. There was no problem with the food, there was a problem with the service, so I, I feel personally responsible for that. So yeah, I just feel, you know, that we fail. Disappointed. So we need to work together as a team and we will make sure this doesn't happen ever again. Both restaurants have been tested to their limits, but things are only going to get tougher. I'm taking the chefs out of their kitchens and pitting them against each other in my flagship restaurant. Oh. <gasps> I've challenged each chef to create one amazing dish for 20 guests. Really, really excited. One of the biggest days for me in my career. If we go forward now, it's going to be just a dream, you know, come true. It really means a lot for a chef to be here. I hope I can deliver on quality as this restaurant deserves. Let's do it, yeah? <laughs> but to win them the last remaining place in the semi finals, it will have to be the finest dish of their lives. Big test. 20 guests only, one stunning dish. Make sure that every ounce of passion, excitement, knowledge, and experience goes into that plate. And at the end of it, one restaurant is going through the semi final. One is leaving the competition. Thank Off we go. Both restaurants will be going all out to win with a classic Spanish ingredient, pork. Favoured for its amazing versatility. Pork's a very tough meat to get right. And when it's overcooked, nothing worse. Dry. Outside, a dining room full of VIPs, all with a passion for Spanish food, will help me judge both dishes tonight, including renowned Spanish sommelier Bruno Marciano, and the Spanish ambassador, Don Carles Casajuana Epaulet. All the front of house teams can do is wait and hope. On order, El Parada. Four covers, table five, four pig cheeks. Yes, chef. Thank you. After my secret diner's bombshell, Omar is putting everything on the line tonight with an incredibly complex dish. He's mixing the refined with the rustic. A rich pig's trotter, foie gras, and ham on Wellington so with a sweet fake puree, we'll sit alongside some of the cheapest cuts of the pig, slow braised tongue and cheeks. They are the ugly cuts of the pork. You need to be very skillful to make the best out of them. But uh, yeah, very confident. I've tasted all the food. I'm very happy with the flavors, the combination of them all together. So hopefully they all like it. <laughs> so you really are going all out there. There's a lot going on there. A lot of going on, the combination, I think it just fantastic in the mouth. Seriously ambitious. I mean, there's like three dishes on that one plate. He's obsessed with being so quirky. I just hope the sort of balance of that dish comes together and it's not too weighted. On order, four covers, table five, Fino. Right. Four poor cutlets. Yes, yes. Come on, guys, please. At least give me an answer. Look, yes, it's not, yes, it's not yes. complete. <laughs> you know. In her own kitchen, Nervias is a control freak shouting orders left, right and centre, but today, she's like a different person. I want to hear that communication and a little bit of oomph, please. I hope her silence doesn't mean she's lost her nerve. On order, four covers table, one fino, four pork cutlets. Yes, yes. Good. Now it's sounding like a professional kitchen. Let's go, yeah? 
today, Nieves is sticking to her Basque roots, creating a simple dish packed with authentic flavors. Pork cutlets marinated in sweet paprika, accompanied by a silky smooth cauliflower puree and broad beans cooked with hamon. So you're playing to the strengths. You're keeping it exactly what you cook like in Fino. This simple, is simple. Bunnies, that's what I do. Four simple things on the plate, but tasting amazing together. That's what I hope. Yeah? yeah. Pork is lovely. Good. I hope I got the right one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. With Fino, I'm expecting magic. She's kept it simple. It has to be perfect. Every element on there. Four cutlets away. How long? Give me a time. Uh, I'm ready. Good. No, there's that looks fantastic. Love the colours. Huh? Vibrant, shouting summer. OK, look, again. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. You happy with those? Yes. Table two, please, go. Give me a go, guys, yeah? Food's looking amazing. It's incredible. They're just so focused on getting their dishes absolutely spot on. So focused. I mean, that's the most focused I've seen any chef in this competition. Nervez is lavishing her complete attention on each dish, letting the ingredients speak for themselves. Nervez? Yes, sir. Two pork away. Last table, please, yes? Fantastic. Go, olive oil. Happy? Yes, yep. please. Go, please. Table four. Thank you Good. very much. Very nice. Good. Well done. Good job. Thank you. Table two. But will my diners be wowed or underwhelmed by the simplicity of her dish? Beautiful like, colors. Little yeah. colors. Yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. combination. Very, very nice flavors. Very yeah. tender. Very good. Omar, how long for the first table, please? Three minutes. Three minutes? Yes, sir. Great. Omar and Adriana are attempting to elevate the cheapest cuts of pork up to my Michelin standards. Can they really make a silk purse out of a sow's ear? When we come to the hot plate, we come together, so you've got a bit of, you know, teamwork going on there, yeah? I don't want that food hanging around here too long. When it's cooked like that, I want it out, yes? To make sure all five elements reach the table piping hot and beautifully succulent, they must pull together. I, I asked second time to come and help him, so he could four yeah. plates. That's all, so he works as a team. I want to get involved, yeah? OK, just about perfection, that's all. Come on, you've got to wipe all these little plates. I've got the ambassador of Spain out there, guys, yeah? I want everything done. And that's the tongue there, yeah? Yes, the tongue. He's managed to impress my diners with his challenging ingredients once, but can Omar pull it off again? Good. Go, please. Table one. Thank you. Thank you. Service, please. Sophisticated. Yeah. The flavour, the textures. Actually, I had never tried the tongue before. Quite surprised. Really, really nice. Service is over. OK, good. Well done. Water, water. Wow. Before I taste both dishes, I'm keen to find out what my guests thought of them, starting with El Parata. Let's talk pork. The Wellington, the pork trotters and the... Yeah, pink trotters, right, yes, yes. yes, that was extraordinary. Both are very good, but El Pirata has been more creative in texture, in flavour. Sam? I've never had pink trotters before. It's absolutely really delicious. Yeah. I love pink trotters. But I thought the sort of little wrap could have done with a bit more pink trotter and a bit less pastry. But you know, delicious. You know, mm -hmm. we're, we're picking at straws. Yeah. Will El Parata be so generous about Fino's dish? Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. Talk to me about the pork chop. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I really enjoyed the combination of flavors. Was great. Mm -hmm. I think it was just uh, outstanding dish, and it was really, really good. The El Fino dish was a very simple dish done very, very well. Beautiful. I prefer the Fino dish. I think it's more simple, but at the end it was better for me. The other one, it was too much. Tonight. I've witnessed some of the most outstanding food in the competition from two remarkable chefs. We've tried our best. We've put a lot of passion and knowledge into our preparation and service went smooth. So I'm very happy, very pleased. I'm happy with my days. Oh, we love to win, yeah. Now I have the impossible task of choosing which of these two will go through to my semi-finals. My two Spanish contenders, Fino and El Parata de Tapas, have both attained near perfection at my flagship restaurant tonight. My diners were blown away by some of the best foods seen in the competition. Now I face a truly difficult decision. Which of these Spanish restaurants do I believe represents the future of Spanish cooking? 
before I choose, I need to taste the food cooked here tonight. Both dishes look amazing. I mean, really vibrant and just ooze. Perfection. Finos, marinated, pork chop. Four things on the plate. Delicious. I mean, really good. Got that nice, spicy, authentic Spanish taste. For a pork chop, it's fabulous. Cauliflower puree, a little bit grainy, but the combination of the resting juices and that chicken stock across the broad beans, really delicious. To get four ingredients on a plate, tasting that amazing, that's a very confident, clever cook. El Parada, looks amazing. Start off with the pork cheek and the tongue. That is phenomenal, just melts in your mouth. One criticism, the fig puree, very, very sweet. A little bit too much. The Wellington has got that robust, rustic flavor to the dish. Delicious. It's the cheapest cuts, and they've made it taste like the most expensive. Two incredible Spanish restaurants. But only one can go through to the semi-final. Okay, first off, well done. An amazing job from both restaurants. I invite you here today to really create something that is off the charts. Now there's, you play to your strengths. Four things on the plate, very bold. The pork was stunning, cooked beautifully. Hamon, broad beans, it was delicious. What could I criticize there? You make a cauliflower puree. I found it a slight touch too grainy. Omar, I asked for fireworks. You create an explosion. I asked you to use pork, and the only thing you didn't use were the toenails off the trotter. Pork cheek, beautifully braised. Tongue, brave. And then you do a Wellington. Pig's trotter wrapped in pastry. I've never seen that. How could I criticize that dish? The puree is very sweet. You put sweet and rich together. It needs acidity. Just something to bang, to lift and separate that. I put the two dishes together and looked at them. I think, jeez, where'd you start? There was a fraction in it. It's been an amazing journey, and it's been packed with highs and lows. The winner of the Spanish category, for me, is the restaurant that I want to revisit. Is it for the fireworks from the Parate? Or is it the warmth and the skill from Fino? The closest fort contest. The restaurant going through to the semi-final. Based on everything I've experienced, seen, tasted, is... Fino, congratulations. Absolutely amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Simplicity at its best, wonderful. Congratulations. Really well done. Good job. Omar, we haven't seen the last of you. You have the most amazing excitement with your level of creativity. Well done. Thank you. It's a shame. You know, a good restaurant needs to be consistently good. And we haven't, in a way. But, uh, yeah, we will get it right. It's a great thing for, for the team, for the restaurant, for me, especially for me. It's, um, it can't, can't even speak. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. What an extraordinary day. So sorry to see El Parata leave the competition, but so happy for Fino to get to the semi-finals. And now, the real battle begins. To be in with a chance of becoming my best restaurant, all my semi-finalists will need to be faultless. You've got to take criticism seriously. I want to know if they've corrected the problems I identified earlier in the competition. It needed more seasoning. To help me find out, I've sent back in my team of secret diners. Two of these restaurants will be leaving the competition Immediately. First to risk the chop is my best Italian, Casimir from Bristol. 
brothers John Ray and Peter are young and ambitious and produce delicious food. But earlier in the competition, I discovered that some of their avant-garde dishes were confusing diners. Is the fish meant to be cooked like this? It's a bit of a strange consistency. It is. I sent in a new secret diner, food expert Rob Allison, to find out if the boys are reined in their wild experimentation. These guys definitely understand flavours. Absolutely, totally understand it. The star anise, I've never thought of it working with olives. I've never even imagined it before. It works deliciously. Every time these boys create a dish, there's huge jeopardy. Olives with star anise doesn't sound like a perfect combination, but yet again, they've pulled it off. Next, roast lamb sous vide with kidneys and pine nuts. The lamb is delicious. The best end and the kidney. Um, it all works so well with the pine nuts. But what about the addition of vacuum packed cucumber to the dish? I'm not too sure. Yeah, weird. I think mean, it's weird. Damn, just when you think you're taking off it. It crash lands. They seem so hit up with being at the cutting edge on the edge of all the innovations that go on in food that they've actually forgotten that what they're actually serving is to be eaten and it's to be enjoyed and it's not to be dissected in some sort of biological experiment. Much of the food at Casimir is magical, but some of the dishes are still misfiring. It sounds really negative and it sounds like, yeah, we, we could be possibly going home. There's, that's the way it looks. Next to face the video evidence is Chinese winner Yu and Yu from Blackburn in Lancashire. Father Charlie and his son, head chef Victor, were overjoyed to win their heat. Yu and Yu. Oh. But I had concerns they were heavily overstaffed. We're we having a beauty pageant in here. Look at all these waitresses in here. Blackburn's next top model. It's an issue that needs to be addressed. Quite a lot of staff. It's not really that busy, is it? No. I think the problem is when you get a lot of staff and the restaurant's not very busy, it's more interesting kind of standing having a gossip and actually looking after the customers. Yeah. With you and you, that was my one big concern. What's the point of having all those staff when they're not looking after customers? It seems to be a different person that comes. I don't know, someone's responsible for chopsticks and somebody is responsible for clearing. We generally get one, one, wait, one waitress or waiter. It's not the way to have a warm service. You don't make customers feel relaxed every time something hits the table. It's a new waitress. I'm looking for the best restaurant on a daily basis with the best food and the best service. And I want to see restaurants get better. Okay. Despite the setback, I'm pleased to see you and you are still serving up wonderful food. Nice, nice crunchy apple. I thought the apple would be a little bit softer, but it's nice and crunchy. And the batter's actually really light. It tastes really nice. That's a real strong element with you and you. They are constantly pushing the boundaries out and they're trying to reinvent Chinese cuisine, but with a 21st century approach. Nice. Nam Jim was my champion Thai from St Andrews in Scotland. It's a great restaurant, but my undercover cameras discovered really surprising problems with service. What? That ranks as about the most aggressive service I've ever seen in my life. Would my new secret diner get better treatment? You know, the beef panang curry, you don't do like a chicken or a, a prawn version of that, do you? You can do it, yes. You can do it? Yes. Oh, chicken lovely. or prawn, yes. Could I have prawn? Prawn, yes. yes. Great flexibility from the dining room staff. Um, she didn't want the chicken or the beef curry. She wanted prawns, and so they did it. It wasn't even on the menu. The service is miles better. What about the food? When I went there, I discovered that some of the dishes were slow in leaving the kitchen. It's not hot. The sauce isn't hot, and the, um, the rice isn't very warm either. It should be really hot when it comes to the table. Damn. Food not piping hot. It was always a concern. If food hangs on the hot plate, it shouldn't sit there. As it sits there, the goodness is disappearing, but more importantly, the food's getting cold. My best Spanish, Fino, is the final restaurant to stay elimination in the face. They barely put a foot wrong in their heat. Head chef Neves produces authentic Spanish food that has impressed everyone. My undercover critic, Simon Davis, is there to see if they've kept their standards up. Ah, is that the prawn croquetas? Oh, 
Yeah, incredible. My Secret Diner is blown away. But listen to the atmosphere in the background. You know, it's buzzing and uh, you can't buy that atmosphere. Really good start. But in his main course, My Secret Diner detects signs of over-seasoning. Um, first bit of negative feedback for My Secret Diner. Slightly clumsy on the seasoning. What a shame. I've told all four restaurants to expect my call. They know that I'm looking for perfection, but only two will survive this stage. It's the moment of truth. I am nervous. Whether we've done enough, I can't. You know, I can't answer that. Let's hope so. May I speak to Sam, please? How are you? Sam, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Not bad. Hi. Hey, um, is that Victor? It is, yes. How do you feel? Uh, nervous. Unfortunately, um, the couple of dishes were slightly heavy-handed with the seasoning. I'm deeply concerned about all those staff. I want to see restaurants get better and climb across this competition. And you and you. It's not going to the next stage of this competition. All right. I'm really sorry. We didn't get through. That's all right. We do our best. Staffing is really my area, and um, I think we lost lost it to go through to the next round because of that. All right. What's up? It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's just, I think, let you probably do. Sorry. Victoria, you only do your best now. Yeah. Sam, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I have to eliminate two restaurants from this competition. And it's about to get even harder for Fino. Because you're through to the next stage of this competition. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, it's good. Um, my legs are shaking now. So it's good. It's a, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. One restaurant is out, and one has survived my sudden death elimination. Now I have to make one more very tough call. Just very nervous. I think you wouldn't be right minded if you wasn't actually nervous about this situation. To go out at this stage would be very upsetting. It's the first semi-final of my nationwide restaurant competition. Spanish heat winners Fino have survived my secret dining elimination. Now it's down to my best Thai, Nam Jim, and my top Italian, Casimir. One of them is about to be knocked out. Hello. Hi, is that John? Hi. Yes, it is. Hello, Gordon. Unfortunately, I have to... Eliminate two restaurants in this competition. You know this competition is about searching Britain for the best restaurant. And I fell in love with Nam Jim from the first minute I walked in there. Oh, thank you. Whatever happens after this phone call, you've got to continue. For Nam Jim... It's been an amazing journey. Today... ..is where it comes to an end. All right, OK. Thanks, darling. Jesus. Look, listen, I'm very, very proud of everyone. Yeah, they did both, so... Yeah. Yeah. The competition is getting harder. And Casimir... Congratulations. Oh, thank you. You're through to the next stage of the competition. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously, yeah, I'm really... Yeah. I'm not the same, I'm the moon. The more it sinks in, yeah, it'd be feel fantastic. And, uh, yeah, it's just brilliant to feel appreciated and given a chance to keep going. So, two brilliant restaurants remain in the first semi-final, and I'm going to pitch them both in a head-to-head -head battle. First, I have a surprise in store. I'm about to drop in unexpectedly for a meal on avant-garde family-run Italian restaurant Casimir from Bristol and modern Spanish tapas restaurant Fino from London. 
To help me decide who will make it to the final, I've enlisted two trusted lieutenants for a second opinion on strengths and weaknesses of these two restaurants. Together, Stable 90, Menu Prestige, Foie Gras. Angela Hartnett, one of the most successful British chefs of the last 15 years. Service. And Simon Davis, one of the, my secret diners, an expert in putting restaurants through their paces. They know the restaurant business inside out. I trust their opinions implicitly. The Custom Air Boys, two very talented young individuals. Beware, it's not your classic local Marlin eatery. Let's go and catch them off guard. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, The first time I visited Casimir, I found their cooking to be new and exciting. But I discovered young chefs John Ray and Peter sometimes push things too far and their experimental dishes can be hit and miss. If you're trying to be avant-garde, you've got to go with your customers. You've got to take every customer forward. Their parents, Susan and Paco, sank their life savings into the restaurant. But it's their sons who call all the shots and cook exactly what they want, whether the customer likes it or not. I want to find out what Angela and Simon think, so we've caught them on the hop. How are you? Very well. Welcome Good. to Casimir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are we? How are you doing? You okay? Very well, thank you. How are you both? How are you? you didn't expect us, did you? you? Angela Harmer, Simon Davies. Nice right. right. Look forward to seeing you after. Thank you. Thank you. Casimir are fully booked. Expectations are high for top-notch food and service. It was still for you, wasn't it? Angela? Yes, please. Still thank you. Thank you. I think this is sparkling, Oh, yeah, it's still water. Yeah. I apologise. Thank you. Very nervous. I've already made a few mistakes, <laughs> but, which I don't normally do, but I think that's just nerves, so... I know Casimir will be trying to impress me, but in a great restaurant, everyone should get special treatments. So I've asked my personal assistant and her partner to dine here as well, anonymously. I'll find out what they think later. In this restaurant, diners literally get what they're given Casimir's avant-garde nine-course tasting menu. For our fish course, we're having salmon-cooked sous-vide in a water bath with cauliflower puree and a lemon emulsion. I mean, that's picturesque. That is ravishing, actually. Beautifully presented plate of food. Delicious. Really good. They have great finesse. Next, what the menu refers to as a traditional risotto. Thank you. But true to form, the boys have given it their unique twist, using barley instead of rice, and it's topped with cold yoghurt, not parmesan. I mean, traditional is the wrong word. You can't call it's that a hot. traditional risotto. <laughs> the cold and the hot sensation, I found it just chilled the whole dish down. For me, it's very sweet again. Yeah, uh, yeah you still find the mm. sweet pasta. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Thank you. You can't win everything, you know, and that's it. Um, there's a taste of the menu, there's certain dishes that people won't like. Um, hopefully they like all of them and, you know, and some more than others, but uh, that's it, really. Next course is lamb, yet another dish cooked in a water bath. It'll have a spa. It'll have a spa bath. It's going for a bath. It's going for a bath. I'm a huge fan of the sous vide method, but the real skill is understanding which dishes it suits. You guys will correct me if I'm wrong. That's where sous vide cooking falls down. Doesn't do it justice. Because no. that bloody well doesn't taste very much. Because it's no. been essentially they look like slow boiled. It it's like a boiled lamb stew as opposed yeah. to you know a cannon that warrants that sort of nutty, buttery, slightly gamey flavour. Yeah. Damn, what a shame. Finally. It's time for dessert, an unusual take on a traditional Italian pudding that starts with an introduction from the boys. Our earliest memory of good Italian cooking was the dessert tiramisu, given to us by our father in takeaway cartons. But you know what, the best bit here, it says sometimes the best really is that simple. Wow. Let's see. The way people make bad tiramisu is too much alcohol, it's too sweet. You've got to taste that espresso through it. <laughs> Got the coffee. Yeah, got it. Yeah. That is exceptionally good. Mm. Very good. No, it is good. We've tasted some outstanding cuisine, but some dishes have fallen short. Technically, um, they're in a league of their own. Yeah. Stellar, really stellar, and yeah. you know, really the top of their tree. But they need to cook for the punter. Yeah. At the moment, they're cooking for themselves, they're cooking for their parents, and they're cooking for their hero chefs. It's always difficult with a family restaurant, but here more than anywhere else. 
Chefs John Ray and Peter need a strong guiding hand, and their parents aren't providing it. I don't think they're giving the feedback. You can't as a parent. You can't no. be that brutal. You know, no. you can't be a manager and slap it down. So no one likes this. Time to call the family together for a debrief. Here's what we saw: uh, highs and lows. Technically brilliant, without a shadow of doubt. But you need to rein it in. You need to rein it in and understand it from a customer's point of view, not your ambition. Because when the customers are happy, you're happy. You're in business. Customers are the power today. And for me, the secret behind any good experience is how everybody else feels in that dining room. And there's a second surprise tonight. Because there's someone in that dining room that means a lot to me. Because she organises my life. Jennifer, please, darling, and Michael. How was it? Overall, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. We were made to feel very special and we really enjoyed our evening. And we thought the chefs were ingenious and talented. And I think at the end, the tiramisu, wonderful. 10 out of 10. Really, really good. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. My undercover diners enjoyed their meal, but I'm still concerned over Susan and Paco. Have they got it in them to run this restaurant with a firm hand? I love my mum and dad to bits. I've said that before. But, you know, me and Pete, there's no question about it. We're ambitious as hell. We want to be in the same league as Gordon Ramsay and Angela Harnett one day. We, I like to think we're almost there, but this makes me more determined to win this competition more than ever. After you. Thank you. As an overall experience, going out for dinner, yeah, it was, it was, it was good, but it can be great. I have to slow down and rein it in a bit. And if they can control their ambition and focus on their customers, they'll surprise themselves. Next, it's time to surprise Fino. What we can't afford to do, all three of us, is give them an easy ride, turn the place upside down, and really put them under pressure. Yeah. So far, this hugely successful Spanish tapas restaurant has powered through this competition. As we turn up unannounced, I hope they haven't let their high standards slip. How are you? Are you well? Good to see you. Like most lunchtime diners, we want to be in and out in just one hour. Petchef Nieves and owner Samanedi will have to produce a perfect meal with speed and efficiency. It's going to be busy service, it's fully booked. So it's going to be quite exciting. We're going to dance in the kitchen. Today we're here for a lunch and we want to be treated like a normal customer, as you would do. In which case, the best thing for us is to Eddie and I to leave you in the hands of one of our normal waitresses and they can um, take it from there. Unknown to Fino, my PA Jennifer is also dining here. And once again, she'll offer a secret perspective on the restaurant's performance. Thank you. Thanks very much. Is there a menu um, without being ripped with a bit missing? Uh, it's all ripped with a big hole in there. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's a bit page one, isn't it? Uh, not good. One of the first dishes to arrive is chipperonis, deep fried baby squid. Excuse me. May I have a plate, please? <laughs> they're stumbling a bit, aren't they? They are. They're good, but I tell you what, there is a way with ham with the salt out there. Quite a lot of salt. Over seasoning is once again a problem. Angela's keen to get to the root of the issue. They not season it before, or you just finish everything? No, with the season, the seasoning, but always I like to have a little bit more. Just a little bit extra. Because yeah. the only one thing is the Cipriones we thought were a bit salty. Every dish that goes up on the pot, she puts extra salt and pepper on. Oh, really? Ah. And I said to her, okay. don't they finish it off themselves? She goes, oh, no, but I add a bit more each time. Wow. Which you don't need to. Without it tasting it. it? Well, yeah, not tasting it. It doesn't yeah. make sense. You've got to trust your chefs. Your service? We've told the restaurant that we're on an hour's deadline, but the mains still take 40 minutes to arrive. Just, just dip your finger in that. That's cold. Yeah. That's freezing. Or... Damn. This shouldn't be cold. But the problem with the pork belly is not just the temperature. Is that all cardamom? It's all cardamom, yeah. And it's too strong. Wow. Far too many, aren't there? It's really overpowering. It's like going to the dentist for an anaesthetic. It oh, is. Crap. It's not their finest hour. No. With that one. We have to leave in just five minutes, and still no one's taken our dessert orders. We're running very tight of time. Could you recommend something quick? Free desserts, and um, what would you? I would recommend maybe the crema catarana, which is our speciality, uh, which is like a Spanish crema brulee. We're out of time. We have to go. That's why I asked you to choose three quick desserts. No, do a second. Two seconds, please. I'd like the bill and I'd like salmon eddy, please. Thank you so much. Damn. That's a shame. That's a shame. I have to be honest, uh, I'm disappointed. 
because it's nowhere near as good as it was last time round. There's a strand of over-seasoning food that has been cooked by the brigade and re-seasoned by the chef before it goes. What I'm more nervous about is the sloppy service. I think, I think what's interesting is look, yeah. looking, looking around the room yeah. is um, the tables who obviously weren't trying to test, test it out. Yeah. The service, um, you know, because I've, I've seen with my own eyes, yeah. was, was good and the, and the quality of the food was good. Eddie's bold claim is about to be put to the test by my PA, Jennifer. How was lunch? We have some mixed feedback. We felt that the welcome needed work. The staff seemed preoccupied at the beginning and we felt a little abandoned. I thought that the stuffed courgette flour with the goat's cheese was a triumph. It looked pretty as a Picasso and the taste was divine. However, towards the end, when the restaurant became extremely busy, unfortunately, the service tailed off and we began to feel neglected. And in fact, our tea and coffee order was forgotten. We've said before, we like to be the best, we like to win. And obviously, it's, it's not a great day when, when, it, when it goes wrong. Carpet suddenly being taken out from under our feet, um, and that's not a, a, a good feeling. My last experience here was near flawless, and it was almost on the verge of perfection. That was embarrassing. Great restaurants need to be flexible and constantly evolve to survive through these difficult times. So I want my semi finalists, Casimir and Fino, to really prove to me they can create something extraordinary against all odds. They both now face one gruelling test for a place in the final, a challenge like they've never, ever experienced before. In just 12 hours, they must turn this bare shell into a thrilling, vibrant pop-up restaurant open for one night only. I want to see if my two semi-finalists can create an amazing one-off dining experience with a tight budget and a deadline. It's daybreak, and I've called both Fino and Casimir to meet me here in Islington, North London. Good morning. Morning, morning. It's early, right? And you're probably thinking, what in the hell am I doing here? And let's be honest, it doesn't look very glamorous, does it? No. Four bare walls, bleak, yeah? Today, you're going to transform this boring, somewhat cold shell into the most amazing, unique pop-up restaurant. Forget your restaurant. Create something magical. Good luck. Thanks, Gordon. Pop-up restaurants are one of the hottest trends in the food world. They spring up in unexpected locations, cause a big storm, and then disappear overnight. There's the cash. Both restaurants will have a £2,000 budget to split between front of house for decor and the chefs for ingredients. Let's take 600 because I don't want to be in the chef. Good luck, guys. Now the shop. And he knows the They've only got until 7 p.m. to create their restaurant from scratch for up to 50 hungry diners who will expect nothing but the best. There's so many things we have to cook, we have to do, we have to prepare. It's going to be a really, really you know, new challenge. I'm taking the chefs to the markets, and I'll be really fascinated to see how this amazing produce gets their creative juices flowing, and they'll have to really think on their feet and adapt their menus based on what they find. First up, the butchers. Free-range chicken fillets, guinea fowl, duck breast. What's going through your mind? Because you've got to start coming up, main course, one of them. What is it going to be? OK, you guys? Yeah. yeah I've got to get that locked down. Peter, yeah, we've got to think about this for the next five goddamn minutes, it's sadly. Throughout this competition, Casimir have produced some amazing food, but some of it has been so experimental it has missed the mark. Will they be tempted to show off tonight, or will they rein it in for their diners? Right, I think it's going to cost you around about six pound a portion. But Peter and John Ray are tempted by a real Rolls Royce ingredient: beef. They'd love to cook it sous vide with a fragile parfait served with popcorn. I think it's we're not going to have water baths, are we? Uh, there's not been a water bath in sight. You can cook without a fucking water bath. Let's get that yeah, right, yeah? yeah? Quite yeah. easy. So you've got to come out of that frame for a minute and, and go back to the beginning. I want these boys to forget some of their wild experimentation. Tonight, can they cook something simple and perfect with no frills? What do we get for pork? <sighs> oh, this is the belly pork? Yeah. We, we're going to go for the belly pork. Nice. 
Fino's head chef Nieves cooks fantastic Spanish tapas and pork features heavily on their menu. But I want to see if she can go one step further and do something extraordinary for this one night only. You're very comfortable with pork, aren't you? We love, we love pork. Yeah, pork. and you do it as a main course, starter, or...? It's going to be as a main course. Because there are other cuts, you know, you've got the most amazing loin. I know, I know, but people love belly pork. Mm -hmm. We love it, you know, crispiness, well, tender. So we, hopefully, hopefully I'll get it right. So 14 of those. Decision made. Pork belly, a great cheap cut. Good luck. Thank you very much, thanks. Is that the right thing to do, or is it not? But John Ray and Peter still can't decide between flashy beef or simple pork. Oh, I know it's a big decision, man. Yeah. You're going to be right as shit. And time is running out fast. Pork fillet roasted, slightly cure it, and then we pan for it. Let's do pork. Excuse me. We're going to change it. Change our change the decision. We're going to change it. Yeah, we change. We're going to change Gordon. We we'll go back to our old Casimir roots. Go to port. It's cheaper. It's got great flavour. We have to yeah. work it harder. That's we have to work the flavours better. Well. Our plan is to cure it, and then it'll be That's a little bit. So your decision. Yeah. Sorry to change your mind. No beef, pork. Where's the pork fillet? Ever since size, sir. Let's go. <sighs> Made a wide decision. Isn't it? I'm surprised Casimir have gone for pork too, but they've chosen a prime cut as well as a belly and I'll be fascinated to see what both restaurants do with it. One night only, let's see what they've given us. A successful restaurant isn't just about fabulous food. The front of house teams must race against the clock to bring their pop-up restaurants to life. It's more comfortable, it's cheaper. I think that's nicer. It's cheaper and nicer. They're working to a tight budget, and I want to see how creative they can be. I, I personally think that we ought to go no cloth. I think so. And wooden table. Sam and Eddie, helped by one of their managers, Kashka, are going for a simple Spanish feel. I mean, that's not bad, is it? No. I don't think the boys will be pleased with that. No, no, no. That's no, no. Helped by the restaurant manager, Anne, Susan and Paco are downstairs trying to choose crockery the boys will like. It's stressful, isn't it? There are real bargains to be had at 15 pence a plate, but they're scared it won't meet the boys' high expectations. I'm feeling very stressed. <laughs> I'm just worried we're not going to get it all done. Across London, I'm taking the chef to another of my favourite markets for fish. Right now, this is a dream come true for any chef because this produce is incredible. It's too much of a choice. Too much choice. Just trying to get the right, the right fish. Much. Doesn't get any better than this. Nervous is drawn to the delicious mackerel and wild sea bass. It's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> no, it's amazing. It's amazing. amazing. The wild sea bass is an irresistible ingredient for the young chefs from Casimir too. Excellent. Decision done. Good. Yeah, brilliant. Good. In Chelsea, Paco, Susan and Anne have decided to search for plates in a department store, but time is tight and they'll have just 40 minutes to get everything they need. Excuse me, could you tell me how much those are? For each? They're £5 each. Oh, my God. Do you do anything cheaper than these, or is yeah. this the cheapest? Here, the plates start from £2 each, but Susan could have got similar back at base for just 15 pence. So if we could have 35 of these, 35 of these, 35 of those... It's a costly decision. Spending more money on plates here means they'll have less to spend on the look of the restaurant. OK, OK, let me think, let me think. Should we just put we some big candles bit. around? We need some flowers as well. We need to get... We've got no money. We're in, there in real shit here. What are we going to put on the tables? Come on, guys, we're wasting too much. What are we going to put on the Come table? Come on, no, let's take these, then. We, we ain't got no choice. OK, so we can have different coloured ones. I know the boys are going to hate it, but they're cheaper and um, we need to have some ready. One more. So that's five of each. That's £469.40, please. One. Oh, they're gone, they're gone. Oh, it's OK, it's OK. It's OK, so, all right, go on. This is... They're a little bit stressed out, but that's what Gordon promised. Sweat and tears, isn't it? <laughs> Come on. No, just Come on, we're going to enjoy this. I'm just tired and stressed, and I'm just worried about this evening. This but evening I will get through okay, this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it may not be the best decoration and the best <laughs> looking restaurant in the world, but the service and the food are going to be yeah. extraordinary. Okay? okay? So, yeah, I think, think focus on that, okay, Susie? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's on, go. Focus on that. It's midday. Just seven hours left for the teams to create their pop-up restaurants. Back at base, they're taking the delivery of their furniture and crockery. Nice, it now looks like a Japanese restaurant. Oh, Paco, we've had it now. 
Susan's um, out of depth. They need to understand a pop-up is a one-night only mega experience and this is it. Show off, create those fireworks because that's what's going to make your restaurant win this competition. Stop it. Let's just cut this shit now. Let, guys, we've only got three hours, right? Yeah. Fuck it, who cares? We're going to do it. We're going to do it well. Come on, then. Come on, then. Upstairs, I get the sense that posh boy Sam and Eddie haven't been to Ikea before. And didn't realise that their eight natural wood tables come flat packed. The first one was 20 minutes, the second one 15 minutes. It's going to take us an hour and a half, uh, which is time we'd much rather be doing something else. And also, by the end of it, we're going to have blisters all over our hands, but never mind. <laughs> Downstairs, Paco and Susan are working on the finishing touches. I was expecting this morning hall. Oh, how's this going to even look like a dining room? But we're getting there slowly. With no time to spare, Sam and Eddie finally master their flat pack hey. tables. I, I would give you a high five, <laughs> but I don't think so. It is definitely different yeah. to our restaurant, but it still captures what we are about. The job. And you do. I'm pleased with what we've done with it. I'm, I, I, I can't believe that we've actually made this horrible room in looking somewhere where you looking can die. Looking much better. Here yeah, we're there, just. We are there. It's, um, you know, it's been, it's been a close run thing this afternoon, but we're sorted. It's seven o'clock. Queues of hungry diners wait to be seated. This morning, I asked you to create, from scratch, two stunning restaurants, yeah? Four bare walls, two empty shelves, one kitchen. The pressure's on, guys. And in three hours' time, one restaurant's leaving this competition and one restaurant is going through to the final. They have just three hours to impress with a thrilling one-off dining experience. Excuse me, this is my, my brother Sam. Sam Hart. How are you? OK? Hi. Wonderful. I hope you haven't been waiting too long. <laughs> and that experience should start as soon as people walk in. And welcome to the pop-up restaurant. Sure. I've got two or three. Just here. Tomato and salad. Tomato and mozzarella. Oh. OK, Casimir restaurant, check on table wow. four. You got the first order in five minutes. <laughs> Susan, you're feeling OK? <laughs> wow, and she's smiling. Nice one, Mum. Table one, all right? One suit, one lots of water. I have to say, I'm impressed. I've had my doubts whether Mum Susan can run a restaurant with a firm hand. But tonight, she seems determined to prove me wrong. They've come together at the right time. And we know it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but great fucking start. Back, come back, on, back, keep back. this adrenaline rushing. <laughs> Casimir are already busy taking orders, leaving Fino playing catch up. The mackerel, please, followed by the belly. The mackerel will start with, thank you. Chicken. But as their first orders reach the kitchen, already there's a problem. What the? What's that? What's he done? Fuck yeah, man. It's the semi finals of my nationwide restaurant competition, and it's Spain versus Italy. Fino from London and Casimir from Bristol. They've created pop up restaurants from scratch, and at the end of tonight's service, I'll decide who goes through to the final. Restaurant check on table wow. four. Nice one, Mum. Great fucking start. But Fino's kitchen has ground to a halt. Hetjef Nieves can't decipher Sam and Eddie's handwritten checks. What's that? What's he done? Sorry, I, I do apologise. Fino is struggling. I mean, they really are struggling, and um, they don't seem as gelled as they should be. Service, please. The Casamir boys have created two amazingly simple starters. On their menu, a delicious fresh tomato jam salad with mozzarella dusted in parmesan. Guys, I need to hear, like, you're fucking hanging off a cliff, shouting for your life. Service! S Service! Come on! Fantastic food, but served in a soup bowl. Yeah, I think the bowl is... Um, yeah, the bowl's quite different. Yeah, this is really good, though. First taste of the food. Um, ladies, what did you have? Salad. Yeah. Salad, the mozzarella. It was very nice. Yeah. You would have served it in a bowl. You would have served it in a bowl. Yeah. Their second starter is a rustic Paris mushroom soup. What table number is that? Uh, that is table five. So you've got more soup in there than they have in there. Same table, they have to be the exact same size. I'm watching everything. <laughs> wow. No one ever gets mushroom soup right. That's that's I could have it a bowl so of it. Good. Really, really good. And that was the best soup? Yes. 
You ever tasted? Because it was almost sort of foamy, like a mousse or something. Yeah. It's really creamy and it's delicious. But it's not to everyone's liking. No, I, might, I just think it's too cold. Do you want me to warm it up for you? Yeah, you just give me two seconds, I'll be straight back, yeah. OK? In the past, I found doting mum Susan usually leaps to her son's defence on any criticism of their food. Don't know, one customer's complaining you just like it a bit warmer. Mum, yeah, no problems. But tonight, it's great to see her treat her sons like chefs, not children. Okay. Just say yes straight away. Two minutes, OK? OK. Yeah. Thank you very much. You, Service? I love Fino's Spanish-infused starters, succulent baby beetroot salad with walnuts and stilton, and a spectacular mackerel dish with grapes and apple salad. The mackerel and the fish was beautifully cooked, and the flavour of the grapes went really well with it. These dishes are Fino at their best, but under this intense pressure, Nervias needs to make sure every plate is perfect. I really want the taste of a plate that's been salty, so I'm not much else in Girls, a little bit of feedback. One table, I just uh, overhearing them, a little bit salty, they said, on the, on the start of the mackerel. Of course. So mackerel, a little bit. Mackerel. One table. So one hour in. Fino, I've fallen behind. They got off the really shit start. Not only that, but food's coming back, and the mackerel is salty, which is a common thread across Fino. We're going to pick up the speed, uh, pick up the gear, pick up the standards, you know, but this will get better. On to the mains, and Nieves is planning to knock the diner's socks off with the wonderful flavours of a Fino classic. Belly of pork with red wine sauce. Now, that pork looks fantastic. Nieves. It's good. It's lovely. It's cracking crispy. She's also cooking an amazing wild sea bass with squid wrapped in smoked pancetta. It's almost perfect, but with little else but fish on the plate, I worry it lacks balance and needs some garnish. It was absolutely delicious, but she's missing... Oh. Very potatoes. Yes. We don't have very potatoes in the menu. I know we don't have them in the menu, Nieves. What I'm trying to do to make her happy, she wants potatoes. Can we do it? Yes. If we can do them, chef, please. I think it'll sort out a, a situation, okay? My one concern with the bass was no starch on there. The rich sauce, the squid. It needs yeah. a start. You know, it needs something along those lines. But we can boil potatoes. It takes six or seven minutes. I love the way Fino are doing everything they can to please their customers. Great, thank you. Three Santiago's, one fig, please. These are like the most delicious potatoes. Two potatoes. <laughs> two potatoes. <laughs> two potatoes. <laughs> Pete, how long? Two bass, one port. You said two minutes, two minutes ago. Uh, there'd be about five, uh, four minutes, yeah, five minutes. Let's just, let's I've just got it in the oven, mate. Let's just fucking other. go for it. I've got it in the oven, man. Back in the kitchen, John Ray and Peter are also serving pork, but they're mixing belly with prime cut fillet topped with Italian garnishes. So, there's customer. Really good. Quite sweet. The boys are also creating a fantastic Italian sea bass with cannellini beans. I love it because it's so simple. No wild avant-garde frills for this dish. Wow. You're going to enjoy that. This is for you. I had the sea bass from my main course. The skin was crispy. The, the fish was cooked perfectly. Table one main course back said that was the best piece of fish she's ever had in her life. Fino are finishing with a classic Spanish dessert. Santiago tart. Could this popular sweet be their winning touch? Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I'm not a dessert person. I thought the flavours of the almond was really lovely and the tart. Thank you. Ladies, it's me again. Hi. <laughs> the good looking one. <laughs> For their dessert, John Ray and Peter are serving a modern Italian take on apple crumble with almond infused custard. But they've added a twist that's leaving some of my diners confused. The apple's kind of like lukewarm, but the rest of it is very cold. So I'm just not sure. <laughs> is it supposed to be warm or cold? Slightly warm. Because it's too hot, the flavour can be affected. OK. Casimir's apple crumble is meant to be eaten warm, but it's leaving some customers cold. It was a bit standard, I'm afraid. The rest of the meal was amazing. The dessert did let it down a little bit. 10 p.m. and service is over. Tonight, the diners decided how much to pay. They loved both restaurants, so the takings were equal. But this challenge wasn't simply about money. Well done. Thanks, Chef. A tough 12 hours. It was a battle against time and pressure to create a thrilling dining experience for one night only. We've put our heart and soul into this evening. The kitchen have put their heart and soul into it. And I just think uh, 
We're going to win. But... I mean, I, I believe we had the edge today. To be in um, the final of, of Ramsay's Best Restaurant would be a culmination of, you know, kind of a, a lot of hard work. It'd be amazing. It'd be absolutely fantastic. Thanks, bye. I'm so happy because both restaurants seriously pushed the boat out. And the hard part for me right now is that I have to make a decision between those two restaurants. This has been one of the toughest challenges I've ever set. There were times that I honestly didn't think both restaurants were going to make it. And I started to panic. And as the clock ticked away, the restaurants just started emerging coming individual restaurants with identity, character. The atmosphere in both restaurants, amazing. The food, stunning. And on the back of the last three hours, you've made it incredibly difficult for me to decide on which restaurant's going through to the final. That's what a pop-up restaurant is all about. A one-off, one-night-only, unique experience. And on the back of that performance, it's such a close call. Based on everything I've seen. These guys definitely understand flavours. Let's see how the cucumber goes with all this. Yeah, weird. Everything I tasted. That's delicious. Lovely. It's a proper Spanish dish. I mean, that's picturesque. Beautifully presented plate of food. Everything I've listened to. Cast me a restaurant. Check on table wow. four. Nice one, Mum. To make her happy, she wants potatoes. Can we do it? Yes. If we can do them, chef, please. The restaurant going through to the final. Is... Casimir. Yes! Yes! Yes, yes Sam. Oh. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. You can smile, you can smile, you can <laughs> smile. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. For us, it was a new, you know, a new challenge, so it was really tough. Obviously disappointed, but, I mean, the guys, they are amazing. Casimir are in the final because they understood for the first time in this competition, what customers want. John Ray and Peter dropped the frills and they delivered. I think they're amazing. It's, it's, it's incredible. We've got two little geniuses, but my God, can they cook. Fucking impressive. <laughs>